This is Comb Ridge, 100 miles of undulating sandstone that runs north from Cayenta, Arizona into the foothills of the Abajo Mountains west of Blanding, Utah. The Navajo refer to Comb Ridge as the backbone of the world, and it was the home and a destination point for many ancient peoples. Signs of their presence can be seen everywhere along its length, in dwelling sites, moky steps, nearly indistinguishable roads, and petroglyphs. One of their most ambitious and perhaps most amazing petroglyph panels is the one known as the procession panel. Sitting at the top of the comb, its spectacular location was accessed by moki steps on the near vertical west face and by a far more gentle approach from the east. It is so discreetly placed that it didn't come into the public eye until the late 1980s. Now it is well known and frequently visited. For our visit, we have chosen the gentler way up. The hike takes us through a deep cut arroyo with its own microclime and across sandstone and desert sand where, at the right season, wildflowers and cactus are in bloom and naturally formed potholes hold water, a precious gift in the desert. We wander up a canyon, eventually climbing a few rocks and following the trail, and here we are. There's nothing immediately interpretable about the panel, so momentarily we resort to data. The panel stretches 20 feet along the cliff face and seems to be anchored at either end by large circles. Researchers have actually taken the time to count the glyphs in the procession. One reports there are 154. We will take his word for it. It seems a formal procession, frozen in time like a photograph, with distinctly individualistic participants. There is an almost mystical air about it, a definite sense of movement and purpose, and perhaps celebration seemingly centered around these large kiva-like circles. There are a number of greeting glyphs in the procession, not unlike this larger one from a site nearby. Shaman-like figures carry staffs. One has a duck near his head. The whole procession gives the impression of commemorating a large gathering somewhere, one noteworthy enough to become part of the historical record, so to speak. And although it's hard to imagine all these figures descending this nearly vertical cliff, the procession does seem to be headed somewhere. The Moki steps on this cliff face are well used, and an ancient Chaco-style road did lead up Comb Wash to a great house in a great kiva. The procession figures appear to arrive at one circle from several directions, and they all stop at the circle's edge. Inside the circle are two circular objects, similar to the ones being carried by this member of the procession. Are they the same kind of objects? Archaeologist Earl Morris reported that he found two circular objects on the floor of a kiva he was excavating some distance from here and thought they might be ceremonial objects. We also see them in larger size at the Wolfman panel nearby and on numerous boulders in the area. It's possible the modern descendants of the ancient glyph makers know exactly what these objects are and how they're used, but we don't. Perhaps these sandal glyphs are the signatures of the recorders of the procession. Perhaps they were also participants in the event. Perhaps these glyphs mean a long journey. Perhaps they're unrelated to the procession at all. The large animals on another part of the panel suggest a hunting theme and there are a number of hunting atlatls, at least one of which seems to have struck an animal. Several of the animals appear to have piercings in vulnerable spots, and there seems to be fluid dripping, perhaps blood. A two-horned snake seems to be emanating from the rear of this elk. Many of these hunting motifs seem to have been superimposed over the procession at a later date, though atlatls are more ancient than the Great House and Great Kiva not too distant from here. Some archaeologists tell us that hunting scenes are actually related to rain prayers and have nothing to do with hunting at all. Beware our cultural biases and interpretations, they warn. So what is the significance of all this? Is it in any way about a journey at all? If so, where were all these figures going? 
Was this the record of an actual event or a more mystical journey? Is there a relationship between this procession and the Anasazi dwellings that are scattered along the comb and in nearby canyons? We, of course, will never know, but all these questions and their possible answers make for great discussions around campfires. <laughs>